um, see Ryan, and Bert, Ryan Burton out there. How did you see him? He's still, he's still out there. Oh, doing, is he? Doing, doing a fitness test. He was there and had a look. Is, is he going to play? Ryan? Yeah. He's, not, he's doing a fitness test. So is that your, de your decision or ours? He's been out there for about 40 minutes doing solo work. On and you've seen him do that day. most other weeks? I'm just saying, is he going to play? You're expecting to play, yes. Yeah. Is he dealing with a little bit of a calf niggle? No. He doesn't have any issue at all? No. What about Charlie Dixon? Does he have any issues? Is he going to be lining up? Well, what, hang on, I should start then. We're going, selection will be announced tonight. And once that's announced, you'll know all those answers. Can you give us anything, Ken? No, nothing to do with selection. Then how have you managed to block out the external noise this week? We've got an opportunity to prepare to play in a, um, you know, a, a semi-final that gives you an opportunity to play in a prelim final. So uh, it's been pretty easy to keep our focus on what we need to do this week. But has it been, I guess, in terms of maybe your coaching career, almost the biggest week in terms of everything? Like, yeah, in terms of, yeah, of everything, like the biggest week of your coaching career? In what way, sorry, Simon? I guess, do you feel like, you know, the ramifications maybe if the you know, prelim f final on one thing, what, you know, all the fallout that could happen if, you know, if the season does end? Yeah, I think they're, um, I think the, that's not stuff that we spend time on because we know exactly what we're doing internally and, um, you know, the, the direction that we're going and what we're trying to achieve is that we don't need to get distracted by anything other than this week's performance and let everything else happen from there. 273 games for you though, meeting the club record. Yep. There's obviously a lot of other noise going around, but have you had a moment to just reflect on that? Yeah, that, not really, because those sort of things, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, in some ways remarkable that I've got to this point, but... But reality is, you reflect on those things after your career, and hopefully there's there's a lot more to go. Speculation you may go a little bit taller, not shorter this week. Is there any overall philosophy for your selection? <laughs> as, as when selection comes out tonight, you'll have a, a real clear view on what that will look like. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we've got the decisions to make around, you know, do we or don't we play Todd Marshall, I think is, is simply the answer. And you know, we'll, we'll make that decision this afternoon. What do you want up there? How do we get the best advantage over Hawthorne? And Hawthorne will be doing exactly the same thing about us. They'll be trying to figure out how they get the best advantage over us. And as is always, we're really focusing on how to um, beat the opposition. And that's what we're going to try and do with this week's game. Does no Sam Frost make it more appealing to possibly play those four calls? In the no, I, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, is it more appealing with no Farrell, no Houston, for them to play more smaller forwards? You know, you, th at this time of the year, you actually play your best people that will give you the chance to win and I think that's what I think both teams will be trying to do that. Has he got enough fitness? Well I guess that was kind of the issue you know the lack of match fitness. Has he got enough fit fitness on the track to be able to Tied. Yeah. Yeah well if, if we make that decision clearly we think he has um, and we'll make that decision later on but um, we're, we're, look we all know and understand what Todd's capable of at, at his absolute best. Um, he hasn't had a great run this year to be at his absolute best so We've got to make that decision. I've yes, had a full week to reflect on last week, Ken. What's been the biggest learning coming up against a team like Hawthorne, who are obviously in some very good form? I think your, your biggest reflection, on again, from last week is that you've just got to be ready to go right from the very start at this time of the year against every team. And if you don't have a contest level that's at a required level, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And then everything else can fall down really quickly. How close did you watch last Friday night's game against the Dogs? Extremely close. <laughs> What do you take out of that uh, come from behind win against the Hawks earlier in the season? Not too much. Like I say every week when we have these conversations around what the last game means, it doesn't mean much at all. It's going to mean a lot more tomorrow night once we get going and, and we give ourselves a chance to be in the game. Do you yep. see, see them as a fairly uh, brash or a confident side? There's, there's a lot of celebrating, a lot of social media comments from them. Yeah, that's you know, the Hawthorne decision, it's not mine. Do you um, talk to Zach about, I guess, Expecting them to go after his roots, given you know, given subbed off, you know, it might be still a bit sore. No, I say, go for it. Unlike most people, well, so unlike some people, Zach's a tough player, really tough player. He won't, he won't take a step backwards. Did that then? I guess the criticism that he got from you know former poor player in Canning Corns. Then did that? Were you annoyed at that when when you saw that? Again, no, they're not my, they're not things that I, I need to worry about. All I need to know and what I do know is Zach is an incredibly tough player, voted the most courageous player in the competition over the last two years by his peers. It's a pretty good recommendation.
Connor's received some criticism this week as well for his performance and potentially his leadership as well. Do you think that criticism is fair in your eyes? No, I don't think it's fair, but I think it's part of the part of the journey. I think that's what happens when you don't perform, and we all get criticised, whether that be Connor, whether that be me, Zach, whoever. It's about the collective. It's the whole group that cop the criticism of that, and some individuals get pointed out. You were in the same position last year, staring down straight sets, albeit you had a lot more injury. What, what have you learned from that? Have you done anything different this week? Yeah, no, we've, well, I think what you do know and what you, you have to be prepared to do is just solely focus on this week. Not what went on, what has, what might go on. You just got to really focus in on what you can control. And for us, we can only control how we prepare for this week. I feel like we've had a, a really strong preparation week. We we absolutely understand the opposition we're going to come up against. We know the the outcomes of the game. If you get it right or wrong, we're ready to have a go at it. A few of the players thought that you speak about preparation that maybe last week wasn't ideal or didn't train as well as they could have. Have you made any? I think you always reflect when it didn't go the way you want it, and you know you. You're looking for some type of answer in some ways and individually, whether that be players or coaches or whoever, um, people outside the fence, you know, we all have a, a view on what was wrong. We know we got it really badly wrong last week and the team that we played against smacked us. How do you train at contests? Because obviously you don't want to beat each other up before the final, but how do you train that ferocity right from the start? Like we did on Tuesday. I think after the game, you touched on the response that you got after the Brisbane loss. How, how much time have you spent, I guess, in the mental space rather than the physical space for this week about parking what happened left? It was always a, there's a bit of a balance in all, all phases of that for us to make sure we get all parts of it right. You know, we, we have to move our players on quickly. We did. We came in on Saturday. We got ready. We moved over the Geelong game and we started to focus on the Hawthorne game. And, and at this time of the year, we all know you don't lose percentage, you, you don't get ladder positions. You just get another opportunity because we earned it and we know the outcome this week. If we don't get it right this week, we'll be finished. Even I guess you've been, was it three of the last four losses in finals have been probably blowouts in the end. Have you had to look at how the finals across the whole of over the last you know, yeah, three, I, three, four games? I'm sure you'd appreciate it. I mean, we would have spent a lot of time trying to make sure that that doesn't happen to us again and it has happened. I can't do anything about what's going on. All I can do is help the team be ready for the next opportunity to change that. Maybe not speaking to selection, but when it comes to Charlie Dixon, whether he plays or not, obviously the Bronx cheered by his own fans the other night. You had a chat to him this week that if he does play, make sure he's in the right mindset? Charlie will always be in the right mindset. I don't think that's an issue for Charlie. He's a born competitor, so he'll be fine. Yeah, has the board or the footy, footy committee told you what you need as a pass mark this year? Like, have they told you what happens, you know, if you get to the finals, you get to the semi-final, get to the prelim, kind of grand final? Have they <coughs> told you that to you? I'm not, I'm not going to be a, a smart-ass here in any way, shape or form, but I'm contracted. Yeah. That's what the board have told me all the way through. They've shown me great support the entire journey. I trust that that'll be, they'll always be the same. So the assertion from some is that if you lose on the weekend, that, that's the last we'll see of you at Port. Is that, that's wrong? That's uneducated. It's well. It's not the facts. The facts. What are the facts? That you're contracted. <laughs> Done. Is that we we okay with that then? So I get why the, the conversation keeps coming up, but the reality is, deal with the facts. Would you? I'm preparing this week yeah. to help our team find a way to get into a prelim final. That has got too much riding on it for me to spend any time in those other places you want me to go. I just won't go there. Ken, what gives you the confidence that the side's finals issues aren't above the shoulders? What gives me confidence? I, I can only get confidence on the way they, they behave and the way they act and the way we play more often than not. We, yeah, we've, we get it. We, we can't change your narrative until we change our result. And that's what we're going to try and do again tomorrow night. You sat here after the Lions result again when you know, 10 weeks ago and all the pressure was on and you said, I'm a fighter. And then you came out and had that amazing close win. Is there something about when you're is your back used to the wall that you, you dig deep and you find something? Is that what you're going to be drawing on this week? something about our club. Something about our club that we don't like to give up. And that we've always been that way and we're going to continue to be that way. Is that something you've instilled in the you think, over the journey? I think that's something this club's instilled in itself over the history of the footy club. Jason Stone on the bench on Friday? It'll be interesting. You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. He says he likes it. Yeah, no. It, well, again... Seven weeks in a row he's been there. Doesn't mean he'll be there this week, but he's been there seven weeks. And you know what happens? If he's not there this week, so I'm sitting here going, well, do I put him on the bench? Don't I put him on the bench? Because then the media people say, oh, we got it right, told you so. You haven't got it right.
follow you though, Ken? All the, all the media pundits having a crack at your tactics and, and how you prepare <laughs> them? Honestly, it happens every week in this game to every coach, you know, different times of year. Go back and review some of the articles and stories that you've written, not just in this room, but all across the footy season. They're quite remarkable what, what you're allowed to get away with saying and have no, no accountability to. There's a quick to ask too, there's, there's more talk about Dan Hughes and how he's met with Victorian clubs. Are you aware of that? I don't need to answer any more, do I, on Dan? Well, I'm only saying what I heard, you know, and, and what I hear from Dan and what we, what we expect. That's the reality. Look, things happen. There'll be no surprises in footy, in footy seasons at the, at the end of them. Sometimes there'll be something that'll come from nowhere. The reality is all I know is what's been said, what we believe said it now, this will be the fourth time I said it, Dan's contract and he loves our footy club. Expecting to be here next year.